What's going on everybody? So today we're going to be comparing the LG OLED E8 to the left to the Sony X900E to the right and this is going to be to show you guys what it looks like for movies and things of that nature. I know I say it all an awful lot. I say the Sony X900E is a fantastic television and it holds its own and it does a lot right. And you know for gaming it definitely does. But now how does it hold up against OLED for movies? I think that's the question that a lot of people want to know because a lot of people say, you know, LED is perfect for gaming and OLED is great for movies. But I don't think a lot of people actually know what that actually means. So I'm actually going to show you guys what a lot of that stuff looks like. So here we have a scene from Toy Story and you can clearly see that there's a lot going on here as far as color on the OLED. For example, you can see things like the grass in this particular scene being so much more vibrant and vivid on OLED. Where on Sony, the imagery is flat, washed out, muted, and it doesn't resemble a high-end display. Whether it's on the camera or even on my end in person as I sit directly in front, not even off axis a little bit, from this television. I'm telling you right now, it looks hazy. And then I look at the OLED and it's just a whole new world of clarity. It makes you really see the difference, especially in scenes like this, when you can see just how vastly different they perform from one another. Now, I feel like the Sony is being blown out quite a bit, so I'm going to turn my ISO down just a little bit um, so we can actually try to retain some of this. So if it ends up looking a little worse on YouTube in the final product, I do apologize, but I want you guys to see this. I mean, OLED is retaining scary levels of color, contrast, three-dimensionality, depth, immersion, where, again, you don't have that on the Sony X900E. And it's really, really apparent when you look at things like this toy soldier here. The levels of black, you know, acuity and, and, and just precise detail just don't happen on the Sony X900E where it's hazy and washed out. And be advised that I am running the absolute best calibration that I have to throw at this thing and it doesn't make a difference whatsoever against my best OLED calibration. When you look at these two side by side, it's just like, holy smokes, there, there's a real difference here. Now, there are some differences that a couple people might prefer. Some people might prefer the look of the Sony a little bit more because Sony does have excellent detail in things like, you know, foreground and background detail in a generalized sense. But when you look at the overall image quality, it's a clear and definitive win for, again, this... LG OLED E8. It, it really does a great job. Now, let's go to a different scene here. And we're now running with the uh, world, uh, wonderful world of wonder uh, loop of up. And we're showing you guys just exactly how beautiful both displays can actually be. Now, I actually kind of now in this scene, for this particular scene, prefer the look of the Sony just because it has a lot more shadow detail. And OLED was getting a little dark in that area. But when we get this balloon here, it's looking real nice on OLED. I mean, let me pause here and show you guys. Look at all those colors if you can. Now, I know YouTube's not a perfect place for color accuracy, but if you can see that there is a difference in color vibrancy, then let that be perceived as the depth of color that you don't have between the Sony X900E and the OLED E8. I mean, the E8 is dominating with those colors. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there is no other way to put that. I mean, animated content on OLED is, is just king. Nobody is beating OLED when it comes to the animated content. Like, I, I've always loved the way that OLEDs render animated films. And this is just a testament to that. It's a ballet of color. And it really does look quite nice. And as you see, he's got the balloon lifting up the house and... They're all freaking out. I mean, it looks so good on the OLED. Now, not to say that the Sony X900E looks bad at all. Both look really, really good. It really just depends on, I guess, your personal preference and taste. But for this scene, OLED is just knocking it out of the park. Now, when we talk about OLED and we are talking about LED, why do we compare these things? We compare these things so that you can get an idea as to how they perform. Take this scene of Wally, -E, for example. The OLED is black crushing the tires to the left, 
where on the Sony X900e, you can see all of that shadow detail. So while in some types of content and in certain scenes, OLED is king, the Sony would actually end up dominating in certain films, like WALL-E, where we're seeing a big difference in how it performs as far as the shadow detail we're on OLED. Again, that stuff is really getting dark there. Now, we're going to let the rest of the scene play out and see if we can spot any other differences, but so far, that's been the biggest one. Now... I'm noticing that there obviously is a disparaging level of color between the two. Now, when we talk about detail, that's something that you should also bring up because I feel as though the OLED is dominating with the detail, but it does trade off between scenes. So it really will, will depend on, you know, scene to scene. When you do these kinds of comparisons, it's really not easy because you have to take into account the fact that everyone will also have a different, you know, panel variants, so there are some scenes that will look great on other TVs where maybe the black levels aren't so strong on some other people's TVs, so it could be better or worse, depending. And I can just simply tell you guys, like, everything that I'm seeing from a movie perspective, like if you're a movie buff, you watch TV shows and movies, the OLED is definitely dominating. I mean, if you look at all of these rich, deep, inky colors, I mean, you, you, there is no denying that this is just absolutely incredible. Now, we're going to go into a different scene here on the uh, Wonderful World of Wonder Calibration Disc, and we're going to show you guys a little bit more. So, I actually really love this scene because it shows a lot off as far as, like, colors and things like that. Now, if we pause here, and I'm looking at the two images, they are kind of close, but Ola takes the cake in things like the saturation of the color green and blue, to be specific, Red also does look better, ironically, on OLED, because red is a problem color on OLED. I usually look for that first, but that's actually checking out here due to my awesome calibrations and stuff like that. Now, when we look at the, the contrast, the black levels and the rocks better on OLED three-dimensionality. However, the Sony x 900 e isn't very far behind, though, in that it renders a really nice, solid image, and you do have more shades of color in things like the skyline and in the mountains behind Buzz Lightyear, so these are little fine details that you can notice. Just little fun facts to kind of point out. Now, when we look at the planet here, we can see more of the same. We have more shades of color on the Sony X900E and things like the, the richness of the color cyan here. But when we look at the OLED, you have a deeper vibrancy, depth, and saturation level. Though, again, the Sony not far behind, and these two are almost identical images. Now, we're going to pause here and just look at the difference between the color purple. The Sony X900E is slaying OLED in color accuracy. So this is what a lot of people always talk about when they say Sony is color accurate. This is what they're talking about. When you look at the shade of purple, you can clearly see it's very much so off on the OLED, even after professional calibration. Yes, it's more vibrant, but it is not quotation mark accurate. Now, if you were to ask me, honestly, do I really care about that? No, I look at overall image quality to be very frank with you. But if you're a stickler for this kind of thing, maybe you might want to stick with Sony. Now, when you look at the cheeks of Buzz Lightyear, you can see that there's more pink in them as well. And there's also more of a tannish color coming through on the Sony X900E. This is because OLED uses a WRGB panel and they do not have the ability to get as realistic with the color palettry as you can with something that doesn't use WRGB. True RGB is always going to be better for color accuracy than WRGB, but LG hasn't gotten the message yet. I don't know what they're waiting for, to be honest with you. But either way, the image looks fantastic on both televisions. And now, as I see all the background elements come in, OLED just dominates because you see the isolation of the laser rays and the gold pronounces the, the gold is pronunciated so clearly and and the character that it's just like day and night better like i could not even remotely call it close and i think that's really incredible considering you don't expect that when you when you look at you know the movie performance you don't expect things to be that different from one another, but it really is very different. So I think the message is simple, right? If you're comparing, you know, OLED when you're talking about movies to, you know, LED, it's definitely going to be a close race, but OLED is going to be a really nice competitor for movies. Like, I actually really like, just drop my remote here, I really like watching OLED for movies because I feel like it has a lot of depth to it, but there are problems with some movies. 
take for example this scene here in, uh, what is this movie? I think it's G-Force or something like that. If you look at this fly, the OLED is black crushing this fly to almost the point of no return. Where on the Sony X900E, you have all the detail. So what I'll do, I'll try to open up the ISO a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And you see, like, it's just completely and totally crushing out on the OLED where that's not happening on the Sony. So I just think that's really strange that dark scenes can either help or hurt OLED's ability to show you things. Like, take this picture for example. You have the guy's face, you have his clothing, very dark on OLED. It adds dimensionality, but you ultimately lose some of the finer detail that you would kind of expect. So I think the person that likes OLED is literally somebody that is used to seeing really dark imagery. I mean, check this out. This, I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words, and check this out, man. So as we open up our ISO, you can kind of see, look at how dark OLED is for this guy's face. Absolutely dark. I mean, you're missing key information in OLED, and that's why it really does depend on you as a person. And also the fact that Sony not only is brighter, but it does have more natural skin tones on top of letting you see more in your content. So it's not necessarily just like a domination from OLED all day, every day. It really will depend on the type of content that you do end up watching. You know, it does get hard because you have a lot of perspectives and a lot of opinions on OLED. Um, I'm going to try to get this gerbil here to show you guys the difference. So I'm going to open this up here. I don't even know if I have to because I think you can kind of see it. But I'll open it up a little bit. Let's open it up to about, well, let's say there. And you can kind of see the gerbil to the left. Really, really dark fur. Dark, dark fur. However, the character is supposed to be gray. And I think that's all that's biggest weakness. When you get to darker tonalities like gray, you know, it, it just, whatever reason, those pixels turn off way too prematurely. And you get an image that looks like this. So very interesting stuff, I would say, ultimately. But I don't know. I prefer the look of the Sony for this particular scene here, most definitely. Because OLED definitely is black crushing a lot of information in a lot of areas. Like this mole here. You can notice, like, it, there, there's supposed to be a whole area of detail that you see. And we're going to open up our ISO here so you can see. There's supposed to be information on the OLED to the left, but the Sony to the right is dominating with shadow detail. So that's, again, just one of the things you're going to keep in mind. Now, OLED looks good for color. and this particular scene, I do prefer the Sony's look of color, however, because you are able to see more shades of color in the background, cyan and the richness of the flame and things like that. And the floor has way more color depth. The overall environment looks a lot more impressive on the Sony in that particular scene. So again, these things are gonna trade back and forth quite an awful lot. And it, and it really just depends on the time that you buy your OLED, what advancements they've made. But the 2018 OLEDs as I've seen it so far, they all kind of look about the same with some variances as far as like, you know, noise reduction, you know, uh, you got better gradations, better shades of color and vibrancy, but for the most part, OLED does a lot of the same things, and I can safely say, like, it looks good, right? But, like, the, the brightness difference is real, and I think this is what a lot of people get hung up on. So, if you look at the OLED to the left, it's clearly dimming, like, a lot, but if you look to the right, you can see the Sony is just bright. It's this ball of light, and you don't really get any real color out of it whatsoever. It's just really, really bright, and so this is what people are talking about when they say, Brightness isn't always better, because it isn't. Because even though the LG is dimmer, I still see more color and more richness of that image. So that's something that you should also note and think about as well, because it will play a factor in the, all these things. Now, when I look at the, the little logo and things like that, it looks fine on both TVs. Um, as I'm as the scene's progressing and as I'm watching this, now the OLED dramatically more detailed because the black levels are deeper, obviously. And, you know, Sony, though, with the color cyan, I don't know why, but the reproduction of that is spot on. And, you know, OLED's doing the better job here with the color green. Either way, this image right here just literally just impressed me on the OLED. This is, by the way, uh, my first time seeing this particular scene on the E8 compared to the Sony X900E. And I got to tell you, my goodness, there is a disparaging difference in what you get on OLED that you don't get on the Sony. So... For, for starters, you've got Bolt having 
tons of like reflections off of the sunlight, warm white bouncing all around the white fur, and then you've got the brown, the, uh, sorry, the black nose, really dark, really rich, and you've got the, the main character, dark, rich, vivid, popping, three-dimensional colors, the sky's really blue. Sony is just washed out, muted, and flat at this point. So I almost feel like there's like some sort of real-time algorithm going on with Sony where some images can look really vibrant and really detailed, and other images, not so much. I really don't know what to make of it, to be quite honest with you, but that was really, really impressive, to be very frank. I think either way you look at it, it's going to be a win, right? These TVs, like, see now, the Sony looks so much better than OLED, like, by a lot. I mean, if I were to pause here and look at things like the ground, the shade of brown is more realistic on Sony than what we're getting on the OLED. Counteractively, the water looks better on OLED, so it's really hard because you have an extra shade of green in there that you don't have on the Sony. And then you go over to the Sony, then you just have, like, all this warm from the mountainside and, like, everything else in between, and it just looks really, really good. And I think that's what's really going to make it a lot more difficult for a lot of people that are trying to, you know, shop around. These things don't make themselves readily available for a lot of people to understand. And I think by showing picture quality and talking about it honestly, we'll be able to ascertain the differences. Now, as this flower starts coming in here, we can see a massive, massive, massive difference between the vivid shade of purple that we have on the Sony X900E to the right versus the LG OLED to the left, where it's a darker shade of purple. So, two different renditions of purple, which one do you take? And I think that's kind of how this whole OLED and LED thing kind of plays out. Again, both of these displays, professionally calibrated by myself, stress tested for hours, and I'm telling you guys, it's really hard because it's like you really only have to decide on those factors. What rendition of color palettry do you want? And I think that's what divides the OLED versus LED community so aggressively and make people say, you know what, I prefer the rich, vibrant, lighter shade of purple or the darker shade of purple that I see on OLED. And that's where people start to, you know, start saying, hey, one looks so much better than the other because they prefer a certain look to a color. And I think that's kind of where it becomes hard for a lot of regular people to tell. But honestly, if I were to give like a, a just straight up answer, which TV between the two TVs do I feel has the better picture quality, I'm going to go ahead and call it at OLED, just simply because OLED for movies does look really good. And the Sony does have some weak points. Um, but overall, it's, it's, if OLED's taking the win by like, a hair because Sony's detail is immaculate. Like, the amount of detail in the waterfall is so much better on Sony than what I got on OLED, and the color detail is also very natural. I mean, look at this. As we're looking at this scene right here, I mean, there there is no denying the fact that Sony is definitely a king of color, and they produce some of the most natural shades in that beach sand that LG just can't do with their WRGB display, so it's hard. That's why, I mean, yes, OLED ultimately takes the win, but by a very small, faint margin, because it is really hard to tell. However, when we get to this little thing where we have text and color and, you know, bits per pixel popping up on screen, it looks so much better, the text on the OLED, and that whole diagram looks better on the OLED. However, I prefer the brightness and the saturation of the Sony X900e. This is one of those topics where I don't care how you slice it, you're going to find yourself in a really tough place trying to pick and choose a winner. And I think that's the whole fun in this, trying to find the happy medium or the display that looks the best. And I hope by giving this information out, you guys were able to find it somewhat helpful and you know see something that was of value to you here today. I want to thank you guys for watching the number one brand in honesty, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.